Hey, everybody. It's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. Yes, another episode, not a live one, although I'm live, a live. <laughs> uh, but thanks for uh, everybody that joined me last night for the second live episode. Um, we may have a new format, kind of, uh, for next week. So I hope you'll join me Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, what I mean by a new format is the ability to bring in guests. Uh, and to have more than one person talking, so uh, we we work on that uh, as we uh, uh, as we will this week. Make sure we've got everything uh, the way that we need it. But today uh, we're talking about the guns of Billy the Kid, and this is probably much longer subject than a short video. So we're going to take it piece by piece, and specifically some of the auctions uh, that have gone on around guns that were purportedly Billy's. Uh, but first things first, what guns did Billy prefer using? Well, when we talk about handguns, uh, Billy is associated with the Colt Lightning and Colt Thunderer. Um, that would be the, in fact, we've got a picture here for you. So let's go ahead and show you that. Rearrange my screen. Uh, so this from the Texas Rangers, uh, TexasRanger.org website shows the Colt the Colt Thunder and Lightning. The Lightning is the smaller of the two, 38 caliber uh, handgun, double action, which means you pull the trigger once and it fires and rotates the cylinder into position. So uh, it's sitting on an empty shell, but when you pull the trigger, it circles into the right uh, the right chamber and hits the uh, firing pin, the hammer hits the firing pin and it shoots. The Thunderer uh, is the 41 caliber version, so slightly heavier caliber. And at least in this um, uh, uh, photograph, has the longer barrel. It looks like a five and a half or five and a quarter inch barrel. So these were the guns that typically were um, used by Billy. In fact, Will Chisholm, John Chisholm's uh, son, remembers Billy using those little 41s. And they actually are relatively small handguns, um, it, which would dovetail with people saying that Billy had small hands. Uh, so I've got uh, got something here for you. Um, I have cleared this, but I'll go ahead and clear it again because I believe in gun safety. Okay. So this is a replica. Whoops. This is a replica, essentially, of a single action um, Colt uh, of that time. Um, and this has what would be called a bird's head grip. Bird's head because if you put it in the holster, it looks kind of like there's a bird's head peeking out. So not the traditional grip. But from a size standpoint, this would very much, this one is by um, Heritage Manufacturing. It's not an expensive handgun. I think it costs less than 200 bucks. I bought this and put the grips on as a, a movie prop. Not a prop, it would actually was used and fired in my film, 30 Seconds in Hell, but this was one of Doc Holliday's weapons um, in that film. And uh, and this one is only a, a 22 uh, Magnum. Uh, actually, it has a re removable cylinder. So 22 mag right now, um, I think it's got a 22 long rifle um, cylinder. And that ammunition is a little bit cheaper. So if you're going to go plinking at the range, you'd swap cylinders and use cheaper ammunition for it. Um, but uh, so you can see this and it's, you know, it's probably four or five, four and a half pounds or something like that. But a gun like this, and I have generally average size hands. Um, and so a gun like this, for me, it's a little bit short. You can see there's you kind of have to really work your your uh, thumb up there to get a good grasp on it. And it's not all that comfortable with the fingers. Uh, you know, kind of sitting over one another. And so the uh, the issue then would be for someone with bigger hands, they probably would only be able to get two fingers on it, and that could affect the accuracy of the weapon. Um, so these would be less popular amongst people with kind of <laughs> regular size uh, features. But for someone, but for women, um, for someone that needed a concealed weapon, you know, something that you could... Um, 
you know, keep uh, put in uh, put in a pocket, put in a waistband, or someone with smaller hands, a weapon, something like this uh, would be a lot more effective. And so Billy, slight guy, five seven, five eight, whatever it might be, uh, having those smaller hands, this became uh, more of a popular model. Now this one's single action, and what that means is that you have to cock it manually into position to rotate the cylinder so that there's a round under the hammer. Okay, we'll just go ahead and release that. Um, uh, the the ones that you see in the picture from the Texas Rangers uh, website are double actions. And you can tell, you know, kind of immediately a single from a double action. Double action, the trigger pull is much, much longer. So when you look at the ones on screen now, you can see the trigger sits kind of in the middle of the trigger guard. You have to pull it way further because more there's more of a uh, mechanical process going on uh, underneath there. Whereas with a uh, uh, single action gun like this, you see the trigger pull is very, very short and uh, would just need to, all it really needs to do is release this hammer in order to uh, make that uh, make that gun fire. So put that away. Uh, fun little uh, weapon for the shooting range. Um, Bill Manns, who was who played uh, Sorum in my film 30 Seconds in Hell, made me a custom holster for this, really made it for and, uh, Ryan, uh, who played Doc Holliday, but uh, he gifted me the holster. So I've got a beautiful holster that goes with this weapon. But again, 22 Magnum, you know, doesn't carry a lot of power. Good for, you know, I don't know, shooting trees or something. OK, so with that said, now we've got a little bit better idea of the type of guns that Billy traditionally used. Uh, another thing to consider about the Colt Lightning and Thunder is this was a new, this double action was a new mechanism um, back in those days. Uh, the very typical 1873 um, model Colt was a single action, and that would be more of the, which we'll show you here in a, in a moment. In fact, I can show you one right now. Uh, that one. Uh, would be, uh, that's a single action, but the double action was more complex. And these were really notoriously unreliable. They were finicky. The uh, mechanisms tended to break or not operate properly. So to me, it's actually kind of weird that Billy, who's a guy who lived and died by the gun, would um, would favor something, but it was small. And the beauty of a double action is it's quick to get into action. You grab it, you squeeze the trigger, and it fires, assuming uh, nothing goes wrong. Single action, you grab it, have to cock it, pull the trigger. That's a split second. But in a gunfight, a split second is probably all it takes, the only difference between life and death. Okay, so we've got a, a sense of uh, what Billy used and uh, and why he maybe, you know, why he used it. Um, so I want to, uh, I want to thank Gary Wilson, by the way, for sending me this info. Gary's one of our subscribers. Um, he's watched, uh, always commenting on the video. So Gary, thanks. Uh, and he suggested this video because we take a look at an auction for a gun that is connected to Billy the Kid, actually two guns, but one in particular. Um, uh, and, I'm going to show you some pictures and I'm going to show you essentially the exact same weapon, but definitely not the same price. The gun that you see on screen now is the gun that was auctioned off that Pat Garrett had that killed Billy the Kid or didn't shot Brushy in the jaw or across the top of the head or whatever it may be. Um, but this was the gun that Pat Garrett was carrying and has very good provenance. I'm going to show you another gun that Bonham's auctioned, and you're going to go, wait a minute, looks like kind of the same model gun. And that's uh, pretty much true, that uh, if not the exact same model, you know, similar, they're both Colts, obviously. And why did one sell for $6 million and one sell for only 65000 well, that, my friends, is where the term provenance comes from. Can you prove this gun belonged to, was used by, did what you say it did? And with the gun, the recent auction of Pat Garrett's gun for $6 million, the answer is yes. 
All right. So let's take a look at the provenance for Pat's gun, the six million dollar gun or six million dollar man <laughs> billy wilson uh, uh billy wilson owned this gun so billy wilson in the rock house stinking springs um uh, in december when charlie bowdry is killed and the rest of billy's gang is captured garrett takes the gun from billy wilson when he arrested him then later uses this gun to kill billy or not in Pete Maxwell's bedroom that night in Fort Sumner. Now, that's the first thing I find fascinating. Garrett had his own guns. He had a whole armory in the uh, uh, in the, the courthouse in Lincoln. Now, we know that when Billy escaped uh, April, oh gosh, I want to say April 14, but I think it's April 28, uh, 1881, when he escaped from the courthouse, that he rearmed himself. And that will be important when we look at the next gun. What did he rearm himself with? Well, he may not have had the choice to have, I know this is just a representation, but he may not have had the choice to go in the armory and find a, a, a Colt Lightning or a Thunder 38 or 41 caliber. Although he might have preferred that, I think at that point you take whatever you can get. You grab a Winchester 1873 rifle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but G Garrett lost some weapons, certainly. I don't know how much was in the armory. I would be fascinated to be able to go back in time and just look at it and go, oh, was there three or four Winchesters here? Or did Garrett, you know, an armory sounds pretty impressive. Was there 15? And was there 10 different handguns? And were there boxes of ammunition? Um, you know, what else was in there? But we just don't know. Uh, but we know that that. Garrett lost some weapons. Well, he takes Billy Wilson's gun and he keeps it as his primary weapon. And it only could lead me to believe that Garrett lost something that he really wanted or needed. And perhaps it was an 1873 uh, Winchester, I'm not sorry, Winchester Colt, um, seven, and, uh, seven and a half inch barrel that he could not replace. Except... Pat Garrett was in White Oaks, you know, probably out uh, with a wagon or something, you know, ordering lumber. And he wasn't there when Billy was killed. I've got to imagine Garrett was armed. He's the sheriff of Lincoln County. He can't go around unarmed. And wouldn't he have taken his favorite gun? Would he have left his favorite or his most trusted weapon behind in the armory when he left? That doesn't make any sense. So it's a mystery as to why Garrett kept this particular gun. He took Billy Wilson's gun um, and why this is the one he was using uh, some two and a half months later when he has an encounter with Billy in Pete Maxwell's bedroom in Fort Sumner. So again, probably something we're never going to know. I've never heard any other testimony as to why Garrett kept it, but uh, kind of interesting. Okay, so uh, the provenance uh, says, taken by Pat Garrett when he arrested Wilson and the rest of the gang at Stinking Springs, used by Garrett to kill Billy the Kid at Maxwell's July 14, notarized copy of a 1906 letter signed from Garrett, loaned to Tom Powers for exhibition as Coney Island Saloon, and that appears in Tom Powers' inventory and probate. Uh, I, I don't know for sure, but Coney Island is, uh, you know, in uh, Brooklyn, <laughs> New York City. And so I wonder if it went all the way back east to Coney Island. I used to work there, as a matter of fact. And um, that was that's a long way to travel, but it was quite the tourist destination uh, back in those days. Um, recovered by Garrett's widow, Apollinaria Garrett, from the Powers estate. 1933, there's a letter from Jarvis Garrett, April 20, 1983, that says that, and newspaper documentation, including pictures, and you may have seen it, of Garrett's uh, wife holding the gun, sold to Calvin Murby, looks like Murby of Round Rock, Texas in 76, and then sold by from Murby to Jim and Teresa Earl, July 14, 1983. Okay. So we've got a pretty good trail of provenance for this gun, and it is uh, it's 4440 um, Colt Army, and it is sold for six 
million dollars. I was looking for the yeah, just so you can <laughs> you can tell six million bucks, which was essentially twice what the auction house Bonhams uh, expected for it. Seven and a half inch barrel. So there you go. Six million dollar gun right there. Somebody owns it. If Brushy Bill or John Miller or Luis Jaramillo got away that night and were actually Billy the Kid, somebody got screwed out of six million bucks. Um, and uh, that's unfortunate. But the the accepted story is that Garrett kills the kid. This is the weapon he did it with. And so it's worth whatever anybody's willing to pay. And in this case, they're willing to pay six million bucks. That's quite a bit of money. Um, it's uh, not quite, but nearly three times what uh, Bill Koch paid for the one uh, uh, authenticated photo of Billy the Kid. So you got a photo of him for $2.3 million. You've got the gun that killed him for $6 million. The Whitney shotgun that belonged to Bob Ollinger that Billy used to kill Ollinger sold for just under a million bucks, if I remember right. Um, and that, uh, the, again, there was pretty good provenance on that. The stock is wired back together. We hear that Billy breaks the stock over the uh, over the railing and then throws the pieces down at Ollinger. So that's that. Okay. I, I don't have six million bucks. I wouldn't spend it on this gun if I did. Not because I doubt it, just because I'm not that big of a collector. But there's another gun that uh, was auctioned off by Bonhams back in April 2008. So we're going back now 14 years. And this one didn't do quite as well at auction. Let's figure out why. This is directly on bonhams.com, so on their auction house. And if you read the title, you can start to get a sense of why this gun did not sell for $6 million. Because the other gun, Billy never even touched. Billy Wilson had it. Garrett had it. Everybody else had it. But it wasn't like it was a gun Billy the Kid used. So you would think this one sells for more, but the title says an historic Colt single action army revolver attributed to famed outlaw William H. Billy the Kid Bonnie. Attributed to. That's way, way different than used by, owned by, fired by, uh, those kind of things. Attributed to William Bonnie, but we're not quite sure. Uh, you can see the gun itself, seven and a half inch barrel. You can already see the sales price, $64,350, including the buyer's premium, which I think is usually about 10%. Uh, so they would have had a, you know, the, probably the, the selling price was fifty eight or 59000 well less than $6 million. All right. Let's look at the provenance of this one as compared to the provenance of Pat Garrett's gun. 45 caliber, so a little different caliber, seven and a half inch barrel, walnut grips, right side of butt, not Billy's butt, but the gun's butt has, let's see if we can get a better image here, seven notches or six notches. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger if I can so you can see. And I see only five. There could be one somewhere else that because this is the bottom of the picture, but you can see one, two, three, four. Five. So somebody did notch their guns, or somebody at some point later thought, hey, this would be a good idea. Um, but this was not the traditional gun that Billy would have used, right? It makes sense when you read the story in the provenance that this might have been one that Billy took from the armory, uh, if he did in fact take it, took from the armory and and uh, brought with him on his journey to Fort Sumner. So here's the uh, provenance. <clears throat> uh, seven, it, it actually says seven notches. Again, I only see five. Together with notarized letter of provenance from Ben M. Cummins. The letter states that after Bonnie escaped from the Lincoln County, New Mexico jail, he fled to Fort Sumner. We know that happened. There, he hid the gun in a tree and later told his friend Jesus Silva where it was. Um, I have questions about why you hide a gun in a tree. Unless Billy just took so many guns. If he took three revolvers and two uh, Winchesters, I mean, he maybe he could have. But hiding a gun in a tree? 
I mean, it just, I, I don't, I don't get it. There's a story and maybe evidence that Billy buried a gun and some money in the rock house in stinking Springs. And by the time anybody found it, the, 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 the grips had worn away. They were just not worn away, disintegrated and the gun was rusted. So it was essentially useless. Um, but, but hiding a gun in a tree this was not the preferred weapon. Let's take a look again. This was not the preferred weapon of Billy. So if he overarmed himself, yeah, maybe he said, hmm, I'll put this somewhere where I might need it at some point. Tree keeps it off the ground and uh, maybe it's sheltered from the rain, although it didn't rain all that much out in Fort Sumner. Uh, and, uh, and if I need it, I can go get it. Uh, but for a guy on the run, for a guy who, um, you know, kind of made his life and living behind the gun, it seems like a careless way to store a, a weapon. Uh, it seems like something that you would probably give to a friend, bring to Fort Sumner, store it with Celso or uh, Brana or Paulita or somebody, but you wouldn't just leave it sitting in a tree where somebody could come along and find it. But anyway, it says... That uh, he hid the gun in the tree, told Jesus Silva where it was. After Bonnie was killed by Pat Garrett, Silva was called in to identify the body. Um, so he apparently went to find the gun, and Billy told him. He also built the coffin used to bury the outlaw and dug his grave. He later traded the gun to Milton Brown, a Clovis, New Mexico lumberyard owner, for a Colt revolving rifle. This is another clue where I look at and go, okay, wait a minute. Um Clovis is near enough that you certainly would. I think Clovis is 60 miles away from Fort Sumner. So it makes sense that Jesus Silva would have traveled there. But if you have a gun from Billy the Kid, and Silva is friends with the kid, um, I mean, by all accounts, they were they were very close friends. Um, do you just trade it for any old rifle? You must really need a rifle, and Silva might have. Maybe he needed a hunting rifle or maybe he needed it for whatever. Um, but a gun used by Billy the Kid, who's your close friend and who had become, you know, very, very well known by the end of his life and thereafter. Um, do you just go and trade it for a rifle owned by, you know, Sally the Kid or something like that? Um, I don't know. That part, again, makes me wonder, like, why not? Maybe sell the gun, maybe auction it off, maybe get the money and buy three uh, Winchesters. But in any event, uh, he later traded the gun to Milton Brown, a Clovis, New Mexico lumber yard owner for a Colt revolving rifle, um, which would not be a Winchester. Brown, in turn, gave the revolver to his son, Maurice Cummins, who bequeathed it to his son, Ben. So the, the, the gun from the time that uh, Silva relinquishes it stays in the... Uh, in the Brown family. So that provenance and that, uh, that part of it rock solid, uh, the condition gun has been clean, shows areas of light pitting overall with generally clear markings, grips worn. Um, okay. The price, as we said, $64,350. Remember the other gun didn't even get used. By Billy. It may have been used to kill him if he was killed. I believe he was. Uh, but it's not a gun he ever even had his hands on. I don't think he went to Wilson. Hey, uh, Wilson, we're here in the rock house. Here, here, give me your gun. Let me put my hand on it in case I become legendary this way. So somebody down the line can uh, <laughs> can make some more money when they auction this thing off like that. That's probably not happening. Uh, so that gun brings in six million in a gun that supposedly Billy had, although we know it's not his preferred type of weapon, he had it at some point and stuck it in a tree to hide it and then told his friend where it was. Um, that gun that Billy would have held, might have used, maybe killed a whatever, I don't know what, a wild boar or something to eat. Um, I guess they had wild boar in New Mexico. I know they've got them in Texas, but uh, that gun, 64 grand. Why? Probably because that's what the gun is worth. It's probably a historical gun that is attributed via story to Billy the Kid. 
but there's really no, the provenance really picks up with the Brown family, but Jesus Silva going out and finding it, keeping it, and then trading it to the Brown family, that's probably undocumented. Well, it's definitely undocumentable. And it could be, I don't know Jesus Silva, none of us do. I don't know his family, but it could be that Silva just kind of said, hey, you know what? I got to I gotta get myself a, uh, uh, a revolving, a Colt revolving rifle. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those, um, but I've got to get one of those. And uh, so I'm just going to say that this gun, Billy the Kid, hid in a tree. The story just rings very hollow to me, again, for a guy who made his living by the gun, and needed, he would need to maybe get this firearm back at some point um, that he would leave it stuck in the crook of a tree in the elements. It doesn't rain much in Fort Sumner. The gun's probably not going to rust, um, but the grips will tend to, I mean, the heat, um, you know, we're talking about now June and July, the, the uh, you know, the, the heat day after day of the sun rising and then setting and then hitting that is going to start to crack the grips, dry them out, those kind of things. So if Billy, maybe he just didn't really want or need the gun, if it truly was his, um, then, you know, even if he stole it, it was, <laughs> I guess it was still his, uh, but uh, maybe you just go, well, you know, it was, it was just an extra deal. And so he probably didn't need it much. Um, but uh, I don't know. To me, it uh, it rings that uh, this is just an old Colt army, probably never touched or used by Billy the Kid. And the buyers probably got a pretty cool story for 64 grand, but they probably don't have a gun that Billy the Kid ever saw, touched, or used. And that's my take on it. But of course, your take may be different. Um, whatever happened to Billy's guns? Because you know, this is not it. <laughs> I'm not showing you and saying, hey, let's auction this off. But whatever happened to Billy's uh, thunders or lightnings, whatever he was using, uh, which would have been taken off of him when Garrett arrested him in Fort Sumner. Well, there's a couple of stories. One is that Garrett kept those weapons and auctioned them off, which seems unconscionable to me. There are laws about the property of, uh, you know, captured criminals. And until you are, you're innocent until uh, proven guilty. And so Garrett just like wantonly taking these weapons and saying, hey, I'm just going to keep them. Um, it's, it's kind of bullshit, <laughs> actually. But there's a story that uh, Garrett, kept the gun uh, and the rig, uh, sold it to somebody else. I can't remember who it was, and then it was just lost to history after that. Nobody understood the the value of that. Um, but the other story is that those guys stacked their guns in the corner. And they, can't, they couldn't come out with their, with their weapons on, and that uh, Billy or somebody else pissed all over them before they uh, – before they came out and surrendered so that the posse would have to, you know, grab these wet peed on guns. Um, I can, I tend to, uh, from what I believe about Billy the Kid, I tend to believe that one a lot more, although it might just be my wishful thinking. So uh, there were certainly other, uh, other guns that uh, Billy used in his lifetime. His favorite 1873 uh, Winchester or Chester's, um, whether he he lost one to Brady and got the same one back or not, uh, we'll go into that in another episode. But until then, hey, I appreciate you watching. Don't hang up just yet. I want to give you one more thing to uh, have a look at here. And some of you may have seen, others may not. But you've asked for, some people have asked for t-shirts. And so we have our first uh, limited edition, limited edition, all things Billy the Kid t-shirt. It's right here. You can order it today. Um, so you can see the lovely front logo. The artwork is by Mel Hubner, Melanie Hubner of uh, uh, Wadsworth, UK, I think. <laughs> uh, and so Mel did the artwork, which, you know, for the front and then the back part, the full body. I know at least one person has this tattoo on their body, so they really are into it. Um, you can order the shirts. They're 20 bucks a piece plus shipping. Um, a small portion of that comes to the channel to support the uh, 
uh, you know, the shows that we're doing here and some upcoming things. And you can get a limited edition. You must order the shirts by uh, September the 26th. Um, that's it. There's one order for them. When they're done, they're done. I'm sure we'll have a different limited edition at some point in the future. Somebody wants the that's what she said or, or not much Marianne shirt. And maybe, yeah, we'll we'll get to those at some point. Um, but if you'd like to order one, I'm going to put the link in the show notes uh, right below. And you can just click on that and order it. Uh, we, we think we need a minimum of 21 shirts in order to complete the order. And there's a few ordered already. So go and order one, order one for your friend, your enemy, your whoever. Get some original artwork on your back, uh, especially the back I love because Anybody who's into Billy the Kid that sees that is going to instantaneously know, even without any name, who that is and what that is. And so it kind of puts you on the inside of the Billy the Kid Club, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you uh, be so inclined, go ahead and order one. Um, also, please hit the like button. Really hugely helpful to make sure that the video gets seen by more and more people. If you've got more information on Billy's guns, his girls, his whatever uh yeah feel free to email me billy the kid rides again at gmail.com and uh, also you can uh, twitter the show whoops we don't want that <laughs> uh you can twitter the show i think that's what you would call it at btk rides and again a special thank you to gary wilson for sending me some of the gun info for this episode gary keep it up appreciate you all we'll see you again next time on all things billy the kid bye now <laughs>